Hi, and welcome to another episode of Men Are So Smart. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. Hey, Ronnie. We are uh, talking about the Fen Treasure once again today. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things I've done, uh, I found in, in our research uh, for doing these episodes, is a blog page, a website, from a person named Dahl Neitzel, who is very well respected in the Forest Fen Treasure community. Uh, before we get to that, We've been getting a lot of comments lately on our YouTube show, thanks to those folks that are following the story. Mm -hmm. And we understand that for some of you, you know all of these facts and figures and maps, etc. We're pretty new to it. We are, and a lot of our viewers are as well. So please understand that if we bring you information that perhaps you've already heard, uh, please understand that we do that for the people that are new to this, right? Uh, we truly, Ronnie and I, I think I can speak for him when I say, we are fascinated by this story. Uh, we are a bit limited uh, with our lives uh, in that we aren't able to go out and search for the treasure. Geographically. But that doesn't make us any less interested uh, in the story. So, uh, thanks to the help of Dow and his website, uh, here's what we're talking about today. This is what we are taking as fact, says Dow. Uh, the treasure, located above 5,000 feet and below 10,200 feet. Uh, it's at least eight and a quarter miles north of Santa Fe, New Mexico. He tells us it is not in a graveyard. It's not in a house. It's not associated with a structure. It's not in a mine, a tunnel, or a cave. This sounds a little bit like uh, Dr. Zeus. It did, huh? <laughs> and lions and bears and tigers on mine. Uh, where warm water, waters halt is not a dam. Okay. The chest and contents weigh 42 pounds. Fenn said 44 in one email, but has said 42 several other times. Uh, the chest itself is 10 by 10 by 5 inches. And it's made of bronze. Forrest published a map in his book, Too Far to Walk, <clears throat> and told us the chest is hidden somewhere on that map. There you go. Uh, the treasure is a, one of four states, Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, or New Mexico. And the poem, the first clue is, Begin it where warm waters halt. Uh, we've had some comments on that by uh, some of our viewers who say, Oh, you're way off. Okay, we understand. Everybody has a little bit different approach to this. Uh, so now, here is some subjective information. Don't go where an 80-year-old man couldn't go. Yeah, I mean, he can't hide it someplace he can't get to. Right. Yeah, don't have to scale any mountains or rappel off any cliffs. Uh, when He says it's not associated with a structure... What does associated mean? Hmm. Well, the definition, connect something with something else because they occur together or one produces another. Does this rule out it being in town? Could it be in a front yard, park, memorial, etc.? As long as it is not in a structure. So it's, just, it's not hidden in a building. Right. Okay. Um... Seasonal search. Since it's above 5,000 feet, and we had some comments on this as well, uh, just about all of the search area will be impacted by some snow. As the elevation increases, the search season decreases. So uh, I mentioned to one of our commenters that uh, that snow is in the process of melting right now. Right. And I think maybe now is probably the time to get that jump on it. Um, but, you know, it's probably covered in snow. Uh, and for those four states, there's a kind of a smallish window when there, especially when you're talking about elevations possibly up to 10,000 feet, mm -hmm. where they could be covered with snow 10 months out of the year. Yeah, it's very possible. You know, it just depends on which part uh, where you're looking. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about now what there are some things that Fen has said. First of all, he tells us that there are nine clues in the poem. I have to start at the beginning. Will the poem lead you to the treasure? 
yes if you know where to start. I think that's the biggest clue right there. Mm -hmm. uh, clues are in consecutive order. You have to do them sequentially. Yep. Don't mess with my poem, he says. Some folks correctly mentioned the first two clues to me in an email, and then they went right past the other seven, not knowing that they had been so close. Fan says people have been within 500 feet of the treasure. Uh, some of the searchers have been within 500 feet that I know of, and some have been within 200 feet, according to a Huffing, uh, HuffPost interview. Uh, February 4th, 2015. He said it was buried. He never said it wasn't buried. Hmm. Hmm. The person who finds the treasure will have studied the poem over and over and thought and analyzed and moved with confidence. Nothing about it will be accidental. You're not going to just stumble onto it. No. Uh... This is a quote I said on the Today Show that the treasure is not associated with any structure. Some people say I have a desire to mislead. That's not true. There are no rules to be found or safety deposit boxes to be searched. The clues can lead you to the treasure and it will be there waiting when you arrive. Are the clues in the Thrill of the Chase book? Yes, because the poem is in the book. Are the clues in the Too Far to Walk book? Yes, because the map is in the book. Are there subtle hints in the book? Yes, if you can recognize them. All of the information you need to find the treasure is in the poem. The chapters in my book have very subtle hints, but are not deliberately placed to aid the seeker. Good luck. <laughs> Uh, were both maps, or excuse me, were both trips made on the same day and date? He says, I made two trips from my car to the hiding place, and it was done in one afternoon. Are you willing to say whether the place of the treasure chest is the same as the one where you had previously plotted to have your bones rest forever? He says, yes, it is. Oh, boy. This is where he planned to go and die with the treasure. That is a, that's a pretty important clue. Uh, he also says, there isn't a human trail in very close proximity to where I hid the treasure. Hmm. Uh, is the blaze one sig single object in a word, yes. Playing a hunch is not worth much in the search, and those who start out by looking for the blaze are wasting their time it's not the first clue yep. you if you're gonna get nine clues you got to start with getting the first one right yeah uh i would like to know if the blaze can be found during the day without a flashlight he says i would say yes did the same nine clues exist when you were a kid and to your estimation will they still exist in a hundred years and a thousand years he says and i quote the clues did not exist when i was a kid but most of the places the clues refer to did. I think they may still exist in a hundred years, but the geography, uh, geography probably will change before we reach the next, next millennia. Ronnie, let's, let's stop right here and talk about this a little bit. Um, first of all, he um, wants this treasure to be found. Absolutely. The other thing to know is... Ronnie and I were talking in, about this earlier. He's making a great deal of money off the book. Yeah, let's just say in round numbers because it costs about, we've seen it for, what, $40? Let's, let's just use that as a round number. I've seen some a little higher, and I've seen some slightly lower. So just say $40 plus shipping or whatever right. the case may be, but $40 is going to the, the person who wrote the book. Um, and then also the, the book with the, uh, map too far to walk. Yeah. So, uh, let's just say that I don't even know, we haven't really looked at the price for that book, but let's just use the $40 number for the thrill of the chase book. Okay. And he sells say 250,000 of those, um, times 40, that's $10 million. Uh, even if he say, sells 
twenty-five thousand. Mm-hmm. That's a million. There's bucks. a million bucks. And you know, uh, this book is not available online that we are aware of. We searched for it. No. And Forrest says, and it is believed, that he loves books so much that he would never let it be online. Well, and as you were saying, in a lot of the pictures uh, that people have taken of him, they're in a, what appears to be his library, yeah. probably in his home. Yeah, from so that's, floor to ceiling covered with books. Yeah, so obviously that's a... That's a, a, a fun place or a great place or a safe place for him. Uh, that's that's interesting. Now, this other book with the map in it, uh, Too Far to Walk, um, I have no idea what this costs, but, I mean, it's another opportunity for him to make a little bit of money. Uh, I don't think that's his motivation. Mm-hmm. I really think uh, he wants this to be found. Um he has said that in the infancy stages of this search, when he first took the treasure chest out and hid it, it was worth approximately a million dollars, roughly. And it's been hidden for 10 years now. Yeah. And the value of said treasure has gone up proportionately, I would guess. He has said when the value gets to $10 million, he will then go and retrieve it himself if no one has found it. Um, But Ronnie, you came up with an interesting suggestion about that. Well, I mean, so if if it were me, and obviously I'm not 80 years old and I I don't have a million dollars worth of rubies and emeralds and diamonds to place in a chest, but yeah, go pull out $9 million worth of it. Leave a million dollars worth of those (laughs) items in the chest so that somebody can still find a million dollars worth of you know, gems. And books can be sold long, long after oh, yeah. a person passes. Yep. So his family uh, would certainly be taken care of if the treasure is never found. Right. And I think it would behoove his family for the treasure not to be found. Now, that's not to say his purpose was not good. Um, it was. It was intended for families, moms and dads, grandparents and kids, aunts and uncles, for everyone to go out into the wild right. and enjoy what this country has to offer. Um, and, you know, while doing it, uh, while looking for the, the, the treasure, f- finding out a great deal about nature. That was his whole purpose in this, yeah. as I understand it. Yeah, that's, I mean, he made it pretty clear. Like I said, we're, we're fairly... We're mere infants in this uh, chase and the whole the scenario that leads up to it, but we're very into it. Well, also on Dahl Neitzel's website, he says, in a, this is a quote from Forrest that was submitted in June of 2017. When I said the treasure was not hidden in Utah or Idaho, it was my plan not to narrow the search area further, but in the light of a recent accident, And in the interest of safety, I feel it necessary to alter that plan. The treasure chest is not underwater. A lot of people see that they think that it's wet. Nor is it near the Rio Grande River. It is not necessary to move large rocks or climb up or down a steep precipice. And it is not under a man-made object. Uh, and then he also wants people to know that he was 80 years old when he made two trips to his vehicle to where he hid the treasure. Please be cautious and don't take risks. I think that's the that's probably the most important thing there. Yeah. Um, here are some things that Dahl says that we agree on. There is a forest. It's under rules, Ronnie. Mm. There is a forest fen, for sure. It's not a made-up person. He hit a treasure chest that is very valuable. And also things we do agree on, whoever can find out the nine clues and follow them to the chest first can keep it. Now, the rules on this website are pretty simple. Don't spread rumors about Forrest or the chest, or others may think they are fact. See, that is the probably the most important thing. I've gone to a few forums... I've looked at a few of the message boards. There's a lot of speculation. Speculation really 
it's like fake news. Yeah. Um, we try to bring you as much of the facts as we possibly can, as we can uh, support them. Here's a message board. This is from uh, Schwarzjager. I just read the book. I thought it would be a paperback, but it is very large and filled with drawings and photos. I can see why it costs so much. Even without the treasure, it is a very beautiful book, and he is a talented writer. He also says he has placed his autobiography in the box, the treasure chest, as well. It would be interesting to know what is in that beyond what he has put in the book. So this speaks to what we were talking about in the last episode. What purpose does it serve to let somebody know that you've found or stumbled upon this? Because that could happen. Yep. Somebody out hiking could find this treasure, not know what it is, keep it, and not know to contact him. So what we're saying here is that he put a copy of his autobiography in the treasure chest. So that they would know what they found. Exactly. Not that they think they've stumbled across some drug dealer's stash or right. something. And right, <clears throat> So, but, and we were also talking, do you think that a person who is in the thrill of the chase would divulge it if they did find it? Mm -hmm. Um, my theory is it would be like going to the Super Bowl and winning the MVP, but not wanting to divulge which player won it. Well, I've read that he even has a plan for the person that finds the treasure, and he wants them to not do anything or announce anything for at least 30 days. He wants, uh, as proof, a silver bracelet that is in the treasure. He would like that given back to him. And that would verify that you have actually found the treasure. And um, what am I forgetting? Oh, he also wants you to get an attorney. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think at one point he also said he would help people liquidate the the assets that are in there. Because, I mean, what are you going to do with $10 million worth of diamonds, rubies, emeralds, all that other mm -hmm. stuff? That's kind of hard for people to, uh, I mean... I'm sure there are people that buy that type of thing, but um, with help from him, I'm sure he can turn you on to the correct sources. Yeah. All right, so uh, I guess we should be buying it for $35 at Collected Works. Um, that's where you can buy it online. Some people are suggesting that you buy it and then resell it on Amazon for $65 plus. <laughs> that might be able to finance a search trip or two. That's from Holly from Minnesota. That's a great plan. Wrote. Yeah, uh, Beaver Tooth is her online name. <laughs> um, so, all right, so there you go. That's uh, what we have this week for you on uh, the Forest Fen Treasure. And uh, we are doing our research every day, uh, trying to catch up with you guys. I ordered the book online and I hope to get it very soon. I found a PDF of some samples of the uh, the book itself that I've been looking into as well. Uh, but mostly we rely on you. Those of you who have been following the story for longer than we have, uh, our hats are off to you. As I mentioned in the open of the show, we both find it absolutely fascinating. Yeah. And so if you have comments, we'd love to hear from you uh, in the appropriate space below. Uh, Ronnie and I will do our very, very best to comment, and reply back to you um, if you have a suggestion or recommendation on something we should read or something we should look at. Uh, we're glad to do it. We will do the work. Um, if you're enjoying these segments on the Forest Fen Treasure, we encourage you to subscribe to our channel. Uh, it's very easy to do. Doesn't cost a dime. No. Our episodes of this show, Men Are So Smart, come out on Monday. Wednesday and Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific and noon Eastern. And we will try to keep uh, giving it, giving you exactly what it is that you want. All right, Ronnie, let's get the heck out of here yeah, for today, let's go. okay? We've got a certain treasure to go search of. <laughs> I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. And this has been another episode of Men Are So Smart. <laughs>